MoneyWeb now on the money. This podcast is brought to you by Stanlip Asset Management. Invest in more global opportunities through their partnership with J.P. Morgan Asset Management. Chatting with Jonathan Cherry, founder at Cherry Flava Media. Jonathan, appreciate the time. You put out a, an email recently. You're talking around spotting a bad strategy. One of the first paragraphs refers to listed companies who do their, I don't know, biannual results presentation, talk about strategy, and it is... I mean, we're going to be polite here, I suppose, and say it's just nonsense. It's just wasting everybody's time. It is difficult, but folks far too often just really, they're not doing strategy. They're doing platitudes. Yeah, right. And I, if you're an investor, strategy that is presented by a board should be something that you use as your forward guidance as to how you would value that counter. You know, Are you optimistic about holding on to the script? Or do you feel like they're a little bit directionless? And exactly as you say, if you just do yourself a favor and go and download some of the investor presentations and carefully go through what they present to be as strategy, it's anything but. It's a wish list. It's generally planning. You don't necessarily get a sense that the organization has spotted an unbelievably compelling opportunity, which is future orientated. And then they have some kind of idea of what the approach is going to be to unlock that opportunity. And in many ways, that's one part of it. The second part of it, I suppose, is just the performance of those organizations over time. I was just having a look at some of the share performance of some of the big retailers this morning. And you can really see, you know, how that performance is really being affected by this misunderstanding of what strategy is. And the guys who do get it are understandably doing really well. So it's not something that is just about presenting sort of smoke and mirrors to investors and hoping that they buy it. It has a fundamental impact on the performance of an organization. It absolutely does. And often strategy is just the new hype word, which of course right now is artificial intelligence, AI. I see it literally everywhere. And I would say that 90 plus percent of the time, it's just someone played with chat GPT and thinks that now they've got AI in their organization. It's not a proper sort of in-depth interrogation and working out what's the problem, how does this solve it, how does it move it forward meaningfully. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, AI could definitely be a tool which is used to optimize an organization for sure. But is it something that gives you a strategic advantage over everybody else? Mm. Sure, if you've found some positioning that no one else has got and you're able to maneuver into that space, absolutely. But as you say, you know, a lot of these technologies in particular run in hype cycles and everyone gets very excited about it. And I guess the challenge is is you know, show me the CEO that's going to stand up and say, actually, we've had a look at AI and we're not going to waste our time with it. You know, that would be a very strong move to say something like that. And I haven't as yet seen anyone who's doing that. So I think it's pretty much like following the crowd. If everyone's moving that area, you don't want to look like an idiot and not be talking about that. So unfortunately, that's what often happens with things like AI. Yeah, I'm keen. There's some CEO out there say, yeah, we had a look, AI, not for us. And oftentimes, I mean, strategy is, it would invariably be you've got a problem. And that problem might just be that you're not growing as fast as you or the market wants to be. It might not be a structural problem, but it really is taking that problem head on. It is hard. It can be complex. It can be painful for organizations to properly tackle it. Right, because you've got to admit what your weakness might be. And it just in that statement, if you're not growing like the rest of the market, well, then you're not growing because customers don't see value in what it is that you're selling. So that's what the problem is. You know, what you're selling is not compelling. So go back, go back, go back until you find out what exactly is it that is, you know, what is the barrier that's restricting you from actually innovating? And go and find out what that is. And that often could be a mindset, or it could be the cultural dynamics that exist within an organization, which might be very comfortable with the status quo. Then you've got to go and address that issue. Just kind of putting a presentation together and saying, well, you're going to grow 10% year and year. 
yeah, that's that's fine. But how are you going to do that? What is the critical issue that you actually need to address? And that's what strategy is. It's about putting a mirror up to your failings and actually saying, well, you know, what is it that's holding us back and how can we apply strength into mm-hmm. to that opportunity? You know, how can we overcome the weakness by putting together a cohesive set of choices which really focus our energy specifically on that key leverage point that's going to allow us to unlock the opportunity into the future. And as you say, Simon, that is incredibly difficult to do because you've got to check your own biases, you've got to check your own thinking and really step away from your comfort zone and go into a space where you're very honest with yourself. Two words there, focus and cohesive. The one thing I invariably find is that the longer the strategy sort of presentation takes, the less strategy there actually is. It should almost be an elevator pitch. I appreciate that the actual implementation is a long and windy road, but the sort of high-level description of it shouldn't require a half-hour presentation. It should be short, sweet, and very simple and very obvious how it works. Yeah, exactly, because you're focusing all your efforts on one key leverage point. And I often come back to, you know, what is good strategy? Well, if you look at a checkers 6060, mm-hmm. that's an example of good strategy because what they did is that they understood the opportunity was in unlocking this idea of frictionless grocery delivery. And that's the motivating idea. And from that, you go and unpack what that then means. So what would need to be true in order for that to be realized? You don't necessarily have all of the answers right up front, but you've got an idea and a frame that you can start to construct. And then you can put all of your effort and your energies and resources into that specific motivating idea to enable it and to make it come true. And that's exactly it. You know, you've got to take a bet on the future. It's not about covering all the bases. It's about what is that key leverage point that we believe is going to unlock our future and then hitting everything at that specific point and seeing what happens. Yeah, 60-60, a gold standard globally for, as you say, friction, this grocery delivery. We'll leave it there. Jonathan Cherry, founder at Cherry Flava Media. Appreciate the time. This podcast is brought to you by Stanlib Asset Management. Invest in more global opportunities through their partnership with JP Morgan Asset Management.